an entire community grieves tonight. Save it. The president. The tragic loss of local school teacher. We have a sale. A lot of teenagers are on dope. And what police are now calling an apparent suicide. Ninety nine rock. Rock and friends, it's gonna do it for me. I'm Julie Reno. Thanks for keeping me company. Don't forget on tomorrow's big show, your chance to win $99.9 when you hear the song of the day. The master of the overnight, Jack the Ripper, he's up next. He's got more cutting edge favorites on the station that rocks Woodstock. It's 99 Rock. Jack's up next. See ya. I'm here, I'm here. Well, I don't have to do the overnight after all. How long have Flame and Lips been in the format? Ever since Max is out of town. Shit, that's right. When's he back? Uh, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, tomorrow? Or tonight, tomorrow? No, like eight hours from now, tomorrow. <sighs> I didn't hear Flame and Lips. <laughs> I didn't see you come in late. Cool. Uh, this will take you to the top of the hour. I have some production to do. Hey! I'm Rock. Can I make a request? Sure. The tune where the guy sings about all those dudes who died or something. Jim Carroll. What? The tune is called People Who Died by Jim Carroll. Where are you calling from? West Shirley, dude. See what I can do. Thanks for calling. 99 Rock. Cool. You guys never answer the phone. I did? Cool. Um, how about a request, guy? Don't call me guy, guy. What? Nothing. What do you want to hear? Zeppelin, dude. Where are you calling from? Bearsville. 
It's my buddy's birthday and we're partying. I'll see what I can do. 99 Rock. Hi, is this the DJ? Yep. Look, I got a question for you, all right? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. All I hear is this Nirvana shit and all the time and smash pumpkins. What happened to Fog Hat, the doobies? I love that stuff. We still play a lot of that stuff, guy, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, come on, the Beatles? That's music. Elton John? Well, you can just... how many big records? <sighs> you know, you guys really used to rock. I mean, if you ask me, that Cobain guy was just some jerk. Well, I didn't ask you. 99 Rock. Hi. Hi. Is this the Ripper? Yep. Um, you probably don't remember me. It's Renee from Poughkeepsie. I always request Morrissey. I met you at Lollapalooza, remember? Sure, Renee, how are you? Well, I'm still looking for a job, you know. It's just, like, really, really hard to find a good job, you know. I thought it was cool to meet you. I, you have such a really cool job. It must be excellent. You can play CDs and go to shows. I used to do some college radio with a friend of mine. I mean, she did the DJ stuff, but I helped, like, pick out the music and stuff. I always thought it'd be cool to do it, you know, like, as a real job. I bet you get a lot of CDs. And stuff. Okay, Renee, thanks for calling. I gotta go on the air. Oh, oh okay. I, I just wanted to tell you that I think you're really cool, and I don't know, maybe I'll see you at a show. Okay, Renee, thanks for listening. I really gotta go. The station that rocks Woodstock 99 Rock. Jack the Ripper overnight till 6 a.m. The next few hours of relentless rock and roll radio. Talk to the Ripper on the rock line call. 555-6767. 99 Rock. Zeppelin, man. Yeah, I know. Coming up. 99 Rock. Holy shit, I got through. Amazing. Uh, I never really called a DJ before. Uh, Can I make a request or something? Go for it. I don't know. I didn't really think about it before I called. Can you play anything or? I'm on a loose format. It helps if I like the request though. Yeah, I bet it does. How about some, uh, I don't know. Just something really rocking. Well, you're in luck, dude. I like to rock. Where are you calling from? Actually, I'm calling from my car. I'm broken down. That sucks. No shit. I called for a tow truck and they said it's going to be like three hours or some shit. No. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. Where are you? Oh, man, I don't even know. I'm not from around here. Hollyville or something like that? Oh, you're in the bonies, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. There's nothing around here. But I got the radio, I heard the phone number, so I figured, what the fuck, right? Right. Where are you from? Buffalo. On my way to New York City. See the ex-wife? It's a great town. Really? I've never been there. I used to live there. It's a whole lot of fun. Where are you? The uh, radio station, I mean. Lovely downtown Woodstock. No shit. How far is that from where I'm at? You can travel with the map, do you, guy? <laughs> you can tell, huh? Call me crazy. Well, my dad told me that any journey without a little mystery wasn't a journey at all. I like that. You're about 10 miles from here or so, but it's a long 10 miles out of town at 1.30 on Monday. It's Sunday. In the radio world, it's officially Monday morning. But I know what you mean. Feels like Sunday to me. Well, I'll be listening. You don't have a choice, man. <laughs> At least I found a roach in my ashtray. See? Things aren't as bad as you thought they were. What's your name? Dave. Dave, I'll hook you with something. Just give me a little while. Hey, like you said. You ain't going nowhere. Exactly. Well, thanks a lot. Good luck, man. Take care. See ya. 99 Rock. Can I make a request? Hit me. The fish in Just have to join in on this song Calling people on your... What are you doing? <gasps> oh, I'm just typing my labels. Actually, I only have three spots tonight. Not too bad. What production did you have? Oh, let's see. Imperial Tire, a name you can trust. Winter's on its way. Don't let your tread down. Imperial Tire, exit five on the auto mile. It's the lamest spot ever. Imperial Tire, we want your fucking money and we'll take your money straight to the bank. With over 439 locations to take it to. Free blowjob with every set of snow tires. <laughs> Tiny pot. Are you kidding? I never kid about weed, Jules. Don't you ever have any of your own? I ran out of the house so fast, I forgot it. Come on, I've rolled many fatties for you. Or at least one. All right. Get out of here and I'll twist one, all right? Love you, Julie. Just get out of here. I'll save Layla for them. Don't you think your listeners wonder why you play Layla every night? 
what listeners? And besides, these hicks love that classic rock bullshit. I'm one of the hicks that grew up around here, so remember that. Yeah, but you have a clue. Oh, thanks. Because your life doesn't revolve around 15-year-old Molly Hatchet tunes. <laughs> I've seen them like five times. God, how many times did I see like Hatchet, The Outlaws, and Charlie Daniels in one of those kick the shit off your shoes toys? <laughs> With 38 special as special guests. The Rossington Collins Band. <laughs> I forgot about those guys. How could you forget about them? I saw the tour where they shine the spotlight on the microphone during Freebird. In honor of Ronnie Van Zant and the gang. And I am the heck. Hey, Connecticut's full of good old boys. Except now they listen to that. Hot Country 103 or some shit. I thought Connecticut was rich, you know, like rich assholes. I actually knew one girl from Connecticut. She was such a bitch. Oh, then you should know. You know what I mean. What part of Connecticut? Uh, Greenwich. That's not Connecticut. That's like a suburb of New York City. I grew up in Sirius Cowtown. I thought you were from Boston anyway. No, nope. Connecticut originally, then Boston. And now, Woodstock. Take a miracle to get me back to the big city gig. Just roll the bone. I'm running out of music. Do you have any change for smokes? Don't push it. Jack the Ripper rocking the overnight on 99 Rock. We're in the middle of a commercial free hour. This tune goes out to Dave. Check this out. Dave's stuck in Hollyville waiting for a tow truck. And he's only got his radio to save him. I can't get you AAA, Dave, but I can rock for you. It's a station that rocks Woodstock. 99 Rock. <laughs> Talk more rock. 99 Rock. Okay, Lori, that's America and the Band at the Carson's Fairground this Saturday. You'll be on the 99 Rock guest list. Just give me your name at the door and you're in. Cool. How many tickets? A pair. So, two? That'd be a pair. Cool. Thanks. You guys rock. Have fun. 99 Rock, we have a winner. Thanks for calling. 99 Rock, you just won two tickets to Pearl Jam in New York. Pearl Jam? Are, are you serious? Nope. Just fucking around. 99 Rock, we have a winner. Thanks for calling. 99 Rock, we have a winner. Thanks for calling. 99 Rock, we have a winner. Thanks for calling. Shoot. The, the, the best seat in your own personal concert hall. You're listening to Jack the Ripper on 99 Rock. Woodstock. Here. <laughs> wow, that should do it. Yeah, I'm beat. I'm out of here. Have a good show. Get high before you go. No way. I'm too tired to even smoke, you know? No. I guess you wouldn't. Uh, listen for Black Metallic though, okay? If you hear Stairway, you'll know why. You wouldn't dare. Oh, I might, Rabbit. The live version is like 14 minutes long, and this is one large dude. 
All right, well, wait just like 15 minutes till I get home. My car stereo is broken, okay? That's cool. I usually get nice around three. Oh, fuck. 2.15 already. All right, I'm out of here. Have a good show. See you tomorrow. Thanks again, Jules. Jules! Julie! Shit. 99 Rock. Okay, here's the deal. Wow, I'm really out of breath. Here's what happened. This is funny. I wanted the perfect mix, right? But I can't find it. And then I remember... Remember I had this CD in my car, and that would really rock. I thought I'd have enough time to run down to the car, grab the disc, and make it back before the song ended. I was listening to the CD on my way here. Think about that. Right. I had to turn on the ignition just to get the sucker out of the disc player. And that, my friends, was just the added time that I didn't have. I apologize for being out of breath. Thank God the boss is out of town. Here's the tune I listened to on the way to the station. Overnight with the Ripper on 99 Rock. Once I had my heroes. Once I had my dreams. But all of that was Jesus, you scared the fuck out of me. What? Turn it down. The truth is not that comfortable. You scared the fuck out of me, guy. Can I help you? The studio's closed. I have a request. Shit, okay. Most people use the phone, but I guess I can make an exception. Then you gotta leave. No one's allowed in the studio after hours. Okay, what's your request? Then you gotta go. Hello? Well, why did you lie before? Oh, Christ, I'm gonna cut you. No, it's all Jack. You can have my wallet. I don't want your wallet, Jack. These CDs are worth good money. I don't want the CDs. I trade the ones I don't want and I get good cash from it, and this equipment's worth money too. Jack! I have a request. Anything, man. Anything you want. And then you really gotta go. Get that fucking thing out of my face. I'm sorry, Jack. I really don't know how to use this thing, but I will use it, okay? Okay. Okay. Got it. What? I'm running out of music. What do you mean? The fucking song's ending. It's gonna be dead air. If there's more than 15 seconds of dead air, an alarm will go off and the FCC will show up and my boss will show up too. Really? I got like 15 seconds, dude. Okay, go ahead, do what you need to do. Just no funny stuff, Jack. Play the song. I am playing the fucking song for fuck's sake. Christ. Got like five and a half minutes. Is, is that easy? What? Going with, from one song to another. Well, yeah. Okay. Every machine, the CDs, the carts, the, the mic, all come up on a channel on the board. It's just a matter of going from one channel to the next without any gaps. Dead air. Right. Man, this is like teaching one of those cheesy broadcasting classes. Why are you playing the A track? Oh, that's a cart. A cart basically is an A track kind of, except it's shorter. All the station's commercials, IDs, and stuff are on that. It's just an easy way to play that stuff. Okay, more Radio 101. Let's say I'm on a commercial break, right? I take all the carts I'm going to play, and I pop them into the decks and just hit the button, and it's right there, boom. This card, it has music on it? We keep a few tunes on cart just in case the jock's caught with his pants down, you know, running back from the bathroom or something. Emergency situation. Here's a good example, being held at gunpoint. No time to get a CD together, better play a cart. 
<laughs> this is neat. What are you gonna play next? You tell me. What? I don't know. Go ahead. I'll watch. Don't you have a request? Yeah, I have all night for that. You're on till six, right? Go ahead. Do your show. I can't believe this. Here's a scenario they don't teach at Connecticut House of Broadcasting what to do with a madman in the studio. <laughs> Jack the Ripper, always the wise ass. I've always loved your show. That's why I picked you for my request. I had a feeling we'd get along. Get along? Is that what we're doing? Look, do I know you from somewhere? Because if I do, I'm sorry for whatever it was that I did to you. Did I fuck your wife or something? Don't say anything about my wife. I'm sorry. I'm a bit fucking freaked out. Now put the fucking gun down. Don't you ever say anything about my wife. Do you understand? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please put the gun down. You don't know jack shit about me. You don't know pain. You don't know. I have been there. I have been Shut there. up! Why'd you lie before? I don't know what you mean. Jack, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really messing up your show. What I meant to say is, you went out to the car to get the CD. But I was there. You never left the building, you lied. Is that what you got in here, you fucker? Is Julie okay? Did you hurt her? Jack! Please. I'm here to see you. What do you think I am? That's just the point. I don't fucking have any fucking idea. Jack, I'm here to see my favorite radio DJ. The man behind the voice, Rockin' Woodstock. I mean, I mean, it's a long way from New York City. What do you know about New York? Jack, I said we have plenty of time. Relax. You answer me first. Come on, why the big story about running outside? Julie leaves, and you run in the door. Is that right? I knew something was up. Or have you been stalking me for a while? You first. Radio is... Wait, what's your name? You're going out of turn. Fuck that. You have the gun. You know all the shit about me. Give me something. Make it up if you want. I don't care. How? See? That was easy. Radio Howard is like the theater of the mind. The audience can't see you, so you can create just about anything for them to picture. I can be bald, fat, white, ugly, Hispanic, anything. It doesn't matter. Everyone who listens will have a different picture. You can create any picture you like. Think about it. If I say I'm doing the show naked, people will picture me nude in front of a microphone. You used to do that in New York. Right. Nude night. Every Friday night. But, but you weren't naked, were you? That doesn't matter. If you picture me nude, then I was. The story I told about running out of the building to my car was just another picture I painted for the audience. If I told them the truth, that I need to change for cigarettes, and I forgot about the music for a minute, they wouldn't get it. It would make me sound too normal, I guess. Plus, if someone pictures me as a non-smoker, I just shot their image of me. Get it? It wasn't a lie, it was just more of a skit. There's more to this job than I ever imagined. I mean, most people picture DJ just hanging out, playing records all day. Not really working, making a lot of money. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that, but as a fellow jock said to me once, sure beats working for a living. You have to remember that people listen to the radio in every different situation imaginable. They listen at work, by themselves, in their cars, obviously. People fuck to the sound of my voice every night, you know? So not everyone listens to my every word anyway. Except one guy. He called before you took me hostage. His car broke down or some shit. 
Now he doesn't have a choice but to listen. Captive audience, so to speak. For most people, in one ear and out the other. What? I have to do a commercial break. I'm trying to figure out my times. You're going on the air? Yeah, I have to. It's part of the show. My show, remember? Jack, I... it's important that you don't do... What? A... Do something stupid? I'll put a bullet in you if you don't get my request. Don't worry, Howard. Anytime you want, you can do anything you want. Okay. Sorry. Just don't fuck with me, Jack. Be serious. This gig's not worth dying for, is it? How do you talk on the air? You are a fucking riot. You're gonna have to watch this one. I'm running out of music. 99 Rock, more great tunes on the way, including a request for Dave. Don't go away. Have you been feeling lonely and depressed? See, man? No big deal. Relax. Is the microphone on? Yeah. How, how do you know? Okay, Mr. Paranoid. When this little switch is on, the mic's on. When it's off, it's off. Same goes for the CDs, the carts, and everything else. No switch, not on. I'd rather not get shot, Howie, no funny stuff. Howard. Howard. Sorry. How many commercials? You tell me. A little quiz for you. Three. Good job, guy. You know, if you ever regain your sanity, you make a great intern. How do you know which ones to play? See, everything's listed hour to hour. If the advertiser has paid for a certain time slot, that's what they get. It's really pretty simple. Amazing. When you listen, you don't realize all the things that are happening. I think most people picture the daily goings on of WKRP. Probably. It always amazed me that they could survive with only two DJs. I mean, when Venus and Johnny Fever were in the lounge talking less than Bailey, who the hell was on the air? I, I always liked Bailey. Oh man, she was so nice. The one where they had that softball game and... Hold on. Commercial's ending. Jack the Ripper on 99 Rock. Here's another tune by request, but before I play it, I'd like to ask my friend Dave for a favor. Dave, I'm being held hostage at the station. Send the police. This is not a joke. Please help. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I told you not to say anything! Y'all not thinking saying it was a joke! Fuck you! I swear I'll shoot you if you don't! Just do it! Fuck you! Just fucking do it! Put something on now! Suck my ass, Howie! Put something on now, Jack, or I'll fucking kill you! Song. What? How long is the fucking song? The song? Five and a half minutes, give or take. <laughs> Put one right here, pal. If you're gonna. I don't need this shit. I've had enough crap in my 33 years. Shoot me now if it's gonna happen. Otherwise, it's my fucking show! I'm okay! And I will take a nap for one more day! Grant, the song's gonna be over. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, but I haven't had a good pistol whipping lately. Well, let's go. I don't want any more dead air. Relax. Five minutes is an eternity in radio. Still have time to take a shit and smoke a cigarette. Bleed to death? You're not gonna bleed to death. I need to make my request. <laughs> I almost forgot. You're running the show. You know, you'd be a good program director. Don't suppose you have change of cigarettes, do you? No. Now, I'm running out of fucking music. Just Jack the Ripper. That's my dream. It's my nightmare. On uh, 99 Rock. Apocalypse Now. Yeah, thought it kind of fit. Did you ever see the making of Apocalypse Now? Yeah, the couple his wife shot. Amazing all the work that goes into a picture like that. It's kind of like this, you don't realize what goes on behind the scenes. I'm going to the lounge, I need a cigarette. You can't smoke in here? No, oh, man, you can't smoke in any studio. It fucks up the decks. And again, what the fuck do I care at this point? What, you want one? 
Uh, oh no, it, it looks good now, but I quit a while ago. Good for you. Probably did it just to be cool anyway. Okay, give me one, what the hell? This is bad. I've been good for so long, too. I'd say the moment you walked in here and started rearranging my films, you stopped being good. I told you not to do anything stupid, and you did. I warned you, Jack. And you might as well start smoking again. It's a real good way to pass the time in the joint. I ain't going to jail, Jack. And I don't see the cops racing in here, do you? Your friend's probably got his tape player on. Nobody knows what's going on in here. Just a couple of guys hanging out playing records. Like old friends, old amigos from New York City. This is insane. You are insane. I'm insane sitting here still doing a show. What's that? Phone's ringing. Don't! Or what, you'll shoot me? Oh, I forgot, yeah. Then I'd be dead. But I'd be bigger than Stern immediately. Think of the publicity. Maybe you'd be doing me a favor. You could quit this fucking comeback attempt. 99 Rock. Zeppelin, dude. Dude. Yeah, fucking Zeppelin, I do have a memory, Christ. Zeppelin's so fucking over, it's not even funny. Zeppelin's the best band that ever fucking played, man. They were a monster band for years, with good reason, but I've heard fucking Black Dog more times than John Paul Jones. It's over. Give it a rest. Does that mean you're not gonna play any? Yeah. Or I'll play rock and roll as if anyone doesn't know the fucking song by heart yet. Fuck no. No Zeppi tonight, dude. Sorry. Dude, that's so... 99 Rock, what do you fucking want? I have no idea if Perry Farrell has a psychic hotline number. Because I heard on MTV or something he was having a thing to promote it or something. Sorry, no idea. Well, fuck you too, asshead. The overnight DJ gives a plea for help and gets requests. Bad request, too. Look at you. You think you're heard. None of your diehard listeners even notice. Just like you said, people aren't really listening. People are always listening. They're just not hearing. That's what I meant. Don't take offense, Jack. It just seems like the big New York City DJs really hit the bottom. I thought if I picked your show for my request, people will actually hear it. I think I made a mistake. You're right there, Howard. I really can do better. Let's not push the envelope, Jack. Put the gun down, Howie. It's showtime. You have a request? Let's play radio. Now for more information. Is this him? 99 Rock Overnight with the Ripper. Well, you folks let me down. I announced that I'm being held hostage at my own radio station. I say it right on the air, and nobody calls to check on me. Must be a prank, you might be thinking. Must be a cruel joke to improve my ratings, right? Told you. Well, this is no joke. No, sir. Sitting in front of me is some lunatic named Howard, holding a gun to my head. Threatens to shoot me if I don't play his request. Yep, it's not a joke. Do me a favor. When the newspaper prints a story of my death, tell them the show is really rocking, would you? I repeat, this is not a joke. If I attempt to shut down the station in any way, I've been told I'll be killed. So, there you have it. Oh, and one more thing. No more fucking Zeppelin. Yeah, I just said fuck on your radio. It's Overnight with the Ripper on 99 Rock. Let's just ring the bell and find out what the story is, all right? We got company, pal. Fuck! What? Someone's at the door. Maybe a concerned listener. 
I have an intercom. I'll buzz down and see who it is. No. Okay, see who it is. Yeah. Hi, this is Officer Tom Kresge from the Woodstock Police Department. I heard you on the radio. I was in the area. Is everything okay? Well, no, actually. I'm not hurt or anything, but there's a guy in here with a gun. Says he's going to use it if I don't do what he wants. Is he there in the room with you now? Yep. Can he hear me? Oh, yeah. What's your name, sir? Hello? I don't think he feels like talking, officer. You just have to understand that I'd like to, uh, you know, verify that someone's really there. Oh, he's really here, trust me. Look, I'm not bullshitting you, man. I know it sounds crazy, but the guy's really here. He has a request. He's a bit vague about it, but he says he won't leave until he makes it. He also said he's going to kill me if I sign off the air in any way. I'm going to contact the FCC and the state police. I'll get back to you. The FCC cannot take me off the air. Remember that. Uh, okay. And to the person in the studio, if no one's been hurt, you can come out right now, and uh, we'll go real easy on you. I don't think that's going to happen, officer. I should also say that if this is a hoax of any sort, we will be as uh, equally harsh on you, sir. I know what you're saying, but the guy is really here. Okay, I'll call you back. As far as I'm concerned, you do your request, and we'll just walk out of here. I never said that if you go off the air, I would kill you. You made that up. You know, it sounded pretty dramatic, didn't it? Besides, if I'm going to sit here, I'm going to take advantage of the no rules format. Always entertainer, aren't you, Jack? Yeah, I guess so. Do me a favor. Tell me what you know about New York City. I used to listen to you on 101X in New York. Oh, Christ, my biggest fan, right? Oh, hardly. I was out of work at the time. You happened to be on at the time I was home most. I listened to your show almost every night for a year. My wife and I listened. We didn't have a TV, and you had a great show. And you thought you'd impress Jody Foster by taking me hostage. <laughs> no, but that's funny. That's why we listened, I guess. You were, uh... A dick? No, well, yeah, I guess so. Well, if I offended you in any way, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I love hearing you rip people apart. You seem really, I don't know, honest, I guess. Well, now you know what it's like firsthand, just a bunch of crap. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's much different than I thought, but it's still fascinating. <laughs> How did you get here? One day you just weren't on anymore. Well, it's the way it works. You fuck something up like 50 times after being warned about it, and one day you walk in here and, and some other dude is sitting in your chair behind the mic. But you were big in New York. They do it just like that? Didn't you have a contract? Contract? DJs aren't baseball players. Besides, my rise and fall was so fast that by the time I thought contract, I was out of my ass. So how did it happen? Hang on, I'm out of music. It's Overnight Hostage Radio here on 99 Rock. Jack the Ripper with you until 6, or until I get shot, I guess. With me in the studio is my pistol-happy friend, Howard. Coming up, or sometime later on, we'll hear Howard's request and see what kind of musical taste a madman has. And Howie asked a good question. The question was, what the hell am I doing in Woodstock after working in the big city? Well... After college, I lucked out by getting a great internship at the Cutting Edge Station in Connecticut, if you could call it that. It was that lame modern rock format that along with MTV is killing a good thing. Anyway, from there I weaseled my way onto weekend overnight shifts, you know, the guys on the air while everyone else is having a good time or sleeping or screwing. Anyway, from there I worked my ass off to get to be a full-time DJ, and my timing was perfect because we lost three full-time jocks in a year. So I started doing the afternoon show. Man, that was the best. My first real gig in radio. And I was only 24. Well, I was there for two years doing my thing when I got a call from this program director in New York. He had a friend who heard me in New Haven and told him to check me out. So I sent him a tape and bang, we hit it off. And I was in the Apple doing nighttime radio, making six figures before my 27th birthday. I was fucking rocking. 
So I spent six months becoming a personality, doing what I do, then another year being a star, going to all the shows, parties, you name it. And then I spent eight months destroying everything as cocaine sucked out my soul. And did I mention that I was married with a newborn at the time? Yep. This is how you get to Woodstock, pal. By being an asshole. You get to Woodstock because after the divorce, your wife has your condo and custody of your child, and rightfully so, seeing as that I could not possibly take care of either of those at the time, and because you couldn't keep your trap shut on the radio. One day, and I didn't see it coming, I had no wife, no home, and no gig. Oh, but I had friends. Most of my friends sold me coke. This was a wonderful time, as you might imagine. Now I didn't have a job to get in the way of my partying. I still went to the gigs and the parties, but now I was just some fool on blow. I blew what little I had in my savings account in three months, and the wave I was riding dumped me hard on the beach. I'm still spitting sand, as a matter of fact. That's how you get to Woodstock. Because you need the job to get your life back in some kind of fucking order. There it is, Howard. Glad you asked. Now you all know the story of the poor overnight DJ. The rags to rags epic of a guy who didn't know where to draw the line. So I'm here doing the only thing I know how to do. I don't care about ratings or parties. I just hope to spend more time with my kid than I have in the past. And stay out of the wrong company. Pretty simple, huh? Well, most anything worth doing often is. Well, enough about me. There's no format to tonight's show, so I'll play more music. Overnight with the Ripper on 99 Rock. You didn't have to do that on my account. You had nothing to do with it. The drugs really changed you? Cocaine made me a new man. Then he wanted some too. This is really bad. What? The VW is registered to the DJ, and the other is registered to a Howard Ingalls. Oh, shit. That's not all. New York State Police are seeking him for questioning in regards to his wife's apparent suicide four days ago. Pick up the phone, for Christ's sakes. 99 Rock. Hey, it's Dave from the car. I, I called the cops like you said. Hey, Dave. Good job, man. They're here right now, believe it or not. No shit. Are you, are you okay, dude? Yeah, I'm all right. Say hello to Howard, Dave. Uh, who? The guy who took me hostage. Oh, I, I must have missed his name. How could you have missed that part? Uh, I had to take a leak. Thanks, I'm only busting your balls. Oh man, glad I could help. Thanks, I don't know what good it did, but thanks. Thanks a lot, Dave. He speaks. Is, uh, is this Howard? Yes. Well, Howard, I don't know what's going on or anything, but, you know, we all have our tough times, you know. I, you just gotta use your head and not do anything stupid. Well spoken, Dave. I mean, I don't know shit. I managed to mess my own life up enough, but you ain't done too much wrong at this point. Maybe if you just end it now, walk out, they won't go too tough on you. I'm not from around here. I don't know how they do things, but, you know. Where are you from again, Dave? Buffalo. Oh, yeah, and you're on your way to, uh... Home of the Knicks, baby. New York City. See my ex-wife. That's something else we have in common, Dave. An ex-wife in Gotham. I'm not really looking forward to it too much. How long ago did you split up? Two years unofficially, about six months legally. Haven't seen her in, I don't know, quite a while. Sounds like you've had a couple interesting years. Oh, yeah. Self as well. <laughs> I'm sure. I think our friend Howard is going to tell a story of his own tonight, as a matter of fact. Howard? Howard? Earth to Howard. Yeah? You okay, guy? Never better. He's on for a minute there. Hello. We're here, Daver. I mean, I want to see her and all, but it's just kind of weird, you know? I'm glad we're not married anymore. It wasn't going to work out, but that doesn't mean I don't miss her sometimes. Eh? Hey, did you smoke that roach? Oh, yeah. I'm out of my tree. That reminds me. I have a big old bone right here. <laughs> I think it's time to get nice, Dave. <laughs> Join the club. Maybe I can get Howard high, too. Who knows? I think I might like that, actually. No shit, guy. All right. Maybe we should do that on the air. No? We'll get high, then we'll go on the air. That'll have a better effect. I think he's gonna go for it, Daver. This is the craziest shit. I wish I was taping this. Great idea. You make a good intern, Dave. You sure you can handle this? You're not gonna freak out or something and start shooting? No, no, I'll be okay. I mean, it's been a long time since I 
Why didn't you call it nice? Get nice, get fixed, smoke a bone, hit the hooch, burn one up, blow a dude, twist a fatty, whatever you want to call it. It's not a joke. Do you want to talk to the man, Howard? Nope. Sorry. Okay, I'm not going anywhere. Man, am I stoned. Me too, like really, really high. Look, you want to do that request? Because the cops are getting jumpy, I think, and I don't like jumpy cops. Uh, no, uh, now I'm too stoned. Well, it's five o'clock. We wait till six. I'm talking major morning radio. Well, more listeners than when you got here, but it's up to you. But I can't sit here all morning, you know? What are you doing? You'll see, Stoney. I owe someone a favor. She works for the local news network here. This is news after all. I'm definitely gonna wake her up, but... I guess she can't get me any more pissed at me, I suppose. Hello? Hi, Ronnie? Jack? Yeah, it's Jack. I know. Sorry. Listen, I'm on the air right now. I can't talk long, but to make a long story short... Well, she'll be here by six if she believes me. As far as I'm concerned, you do your request and we'll just walk out of here. We'll hide the gun and I'll just say it was a joke. A publicity stunt. Maybe we'll get on the news. Who knows? It'd be a great last show for the Ripper. Why would you do that? Risk your job, I mean. I don't know. You don't seem all that harmful. Besides, I'm kidding myself with this radio thing. I hit the big time. I don't think I can handle the ride again. What are you looking for? If I'm gonna get my ass fired, I'm gonna make a couple of requests of my own. Come on, this is ridiculous. I've been here for four hours already. How hard can it be to get a goddamn tow truck here? Don't use his name in vain. Where the hell am I for Christ's sakes? Hello? Hello? It's Overnight Radio with Jack the Ripper here on 99 Rock. You know, it's been one interesting night. I've gone from scared shitless to mad to, I don't know, it's hard to explain. This guy walks in and turns my world upside down for a few hours, and now I'm questioning this radio thing I do. I thought this would be my last show because I was going to eat a bullet, and now I think it's going to be my last show because I don't need this anymore. 
Without getting too emotional, I never had a chance to say a proper goodbye at my last gig and don't want to miss my chance this time around. So, while I wait for Howard's request... There are three songs that whenever I hear them, I get taken back to the exact moment I first remember hearing them. Now sure, there are songs that remind me of concerts I've been to, or girls I've known, or places I've been. But there are only three songs that take me back instantly to the place I was, like deja vu. A feeling that I literally am back where I was, and I can even smell how it smelled at the time. The first one, believe it or not, is Neil Diamond's I Am I Said. I know, sounds funny. Rock and roll DJ saying that somehow Neil Diamond had an effect on his life, even though Neil is the new Elvis, if you ask me, not Wayne Newton. But whenever I hear that song and it doesn't happen much, I remember being a kid. I remember playing in the living room at my parents' house in the summertime before they got divorced. A baseball game was on the television with the sound down. My dad had the stereo on as usual and he grabbed my mom to dance. I just remember watching them have fun and it was nice. I didn't think at the time there was any possibility that we all wouldn't be together forever, you know? That classic little kid fantasy that his family was the best because it was his or hers, you know? Well, when I heard that song once, when I was in college, I just started to cry. Not because I was sad about the breakup Christ that was years before, but just because the memory was so real. I was back there on the floor with my matchbox cars, my whole life in front of me. It was just so draining. My parents had plenty of good times and bad times after that, but that moment I will never forget. When I picture my parents, I picture them dancing. I picture them happy. The second song that brings me back to a specific point in time where I can feel how I felt that day is my wedding song. The song my now ex-wife and I dance to. That song I'll keep to myself if that's okay with you. Maybe I'll tell Howard. It'll be our little secret. Anyway, whenever I hear it, I'm back at my wedding. I don't remember the specifics exactly. Again, just the feeling I had when that song You'd think the song would bum me out because we're divorced now and all, but it's quite the opposite. I don't think I should be with my wife anymore because we're totally different people. But I was happy on my wedding day. It will always be a good memory. Is this real corny radio? Well, deal with it. And the third song, well, it's not really a happy memory, but certainly one of the most intense feelings I've ever had. When I was in Brooklyn, living on my own after my wife gave me the boot, I became friendly with an elderly gentleman in my apartment building. It's not like we spent a lot of time together or anything. Just passing in the elevator, talking about baseball or the weather or whatever. I think he enjoyed just having a conversation with someone who was actually listening to him. Anyway, I was listening to REM's Automatic for the People disc when it first came out, and all of a sudden there was a knock on my door. I answered it. It was the superintendent. He told me that he needed my help. That something was wrong with Mr. Hebert, my friend. So we bolted to his apartment, and I got there first because the landlord was no spring chicken himself. And he was just slouched in front of his door. He had to be at 80 at least, as it was. It's no less shocking to see someone in that position. The superintendent called an ambulance from his apartment, and I just sat there with him. It was very strange, but I just didn't want him to be alone. So I stayed with him until the ambulance came. It was quiet. He seemed at peace. I stayed with him until they took him away gave my name and number to the EMTs to pass on to his family. And then I just went back upstairs to my apartment and sat there for a while. The CD had been playing over and over again. 
And then the song came on, Night Swimming by R.E.M. That song moved me so much. I felt so many things, so many emotions about life. I don't know if I was sad about his death or just happy that I got a chance to know him or both or what. I still can't articulate the emotions I go through when I hear that song. And when I play it, I'm right back there, sitting in my window in New York, looking out at nothing, wondering what all this means. And those are the three songs, kind of my own Casey Kasem countdown. I'll still hear one when I least expect it. I'll find myself in the grocery store or something, standing behind my cart, staring off into a zone. Music is such a large part of our lives, a soundtrack for our daily activities, so to speak, certainly mine anyway. And that I couldn't put a price on of any sort. And I hope all you have a song that is special or means something. Sometimes that's all we need. Just something to mean something. This is Jack the Ripper on 99 Rock. Oh shit. Who the hell is that? Trouble, I'd say. Who called him? Hi, I'm Ronnie Clark from Independent News Network. Are you two in charge here? You might not remember, All right, man. My show's almost over. What do you think? I don't want to be here anymore. You know, you'd make a good sidekick. You'd be the deranged guy like Calvin DeForza on Letterman. Too bad this is going to be my last show. I guess I could thank you for getting my ass in gear. Is it, huh? Yep. Okay, my friend. Can I dedicate that? Of course. You technically still have the gun. What do you want me to say? No, I mean, I want to do it. Really? I have to say something. I'll be damned. It's all yours. You got like a minute. You need more time to think? No, I'm tired of thinking. Put those headphones on if you want to hear yourself with a big, ballsy radio voice. Tell me when. You're on in like 20 seconds. It's overnight on 99 Rock, heading into the morning show. It's that time. I turn things over to our resident sociopath, Howard. I'm tired. I hope this is good. I came here to say I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. I guess the only one left to forgive me is myself. But that's the problem. How do you forget? Maybe someone can go on with it, but not me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're just fucking words. They're hollow words. They don't mean nothing because they come from me. I don't wish this feeling I have on anyone. No one deserves it. But then again, maybe I do. I killed my wife. Do you know what that's like? Probably not. You see, my wife and I were having problems. I had an affair. Actually, I had a few affairs. Once you break that commandment, look out. It gets out of hand. I mean, you know, the grass is always greener. And I was getting away with it, or so I thought. Anyway, after being a bit of a slut for a while, my wife and I decided to work things out.
I was really glad to have my head back into it. And besides, I had had my fun, and I really did love her a lot. So after a bit of counseling, which really helped by the way, we decided that maybe a family would help. I was suddenly excited. I hadn't been excited in a while about anything. Maybe things are gonna be okay after all. I was gonna be a dad. Wow. So we pick up the old sex level. And now things certainly are nice. Yep, my cheating days were over, I thought. And we started thinking of names. And how are we gonna turn the den into a baby's room? And all that stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, because, uh, because I, I, uh, I infected my wife with HIV. <laughs> you go in for a pregnancy test and you come out and you, you find out you're not going to give birth then you're going to die nice huh <laughs> and standing and standing next to her was her killer I will carry to my grave the look in her eyes. I saw her die that day. Not when I found her five days ago, hanging in the bathroom. I thought I'd come here and and say something like, kids, be careful. Use a condom. Don't fuck up like I did. It's coming from me somehow. How can a murder give advice? What's the point? I want you to know that I'm truly sorry. I didn't mean it. I wanted things to be good. I wanted to be good. I miss her. I miss me.
great to see you back, Jack. I still can't believe it. Whatever stunt you pulled to get back, I give you credit. When you were gone, I thought you were gone, gone. Huh? I'm just saying, it's great to see you back. You okay, dude? Yeah, I'm cool, thanks. Well, this will take you to the top of the hour. I'll get out of your way. Good luck on your first show back. Thanks. Jack the Ripper on 101X. Yep, you heard it right. It's been a while. From the big city to the woods and back to the big city again. Did I ever tell you about the four songs in this world that make my heart stop every time I hear them? Well, if we're going to get to know each other again, I better fill you in. The first song is a request. A request I got a long time ago. Never got a chance to play. Come 